Gluten talk. In this wholesome video, we will be talking about two big holes inside of your sourdough bread. I'll be explaining you the why they happen and then I'll show you three simple tips how you can solve this issue. If you're a beginner baker, then this is something that likely might have happened to you. But don't worry, we're gonna fix that. We are going to be talking about different crumb structures. Top left, the monster crumb. Bottom left, the more even crumb. And in the right, a nicely fermented, a little bit more open crumb. I'll be explaining you all the details on how to get there. And I asked you on the Discord server whether you could show me some of the pictures that have this issue. And I'm gonna be showing them at the start, a couple of failures and then a couple of successes. So let's talk about them. Fails, yes. Well, not really failures. And who would be best to start with a picture from me? So the bread looks nice, but then you have those super, super large pockets there. Eh, not so nice, I guess. So what are you gonna do with the jam? It's all just gonna fall through your bread directly. Colonial sandwich here. This is a super hole in the bread. Yeah, this would be hard to put some jam on it, I guess. Uh, Instagram, Bobby Samarco. This is the post that actually got me started on making this video. The crumb here in the center, it's not very open, it's very dense, and then you have this gigantic super big hole in the center. But no worries, we're gonna fix that. Next one by Bastian from our Discord server. It looks very, very dense as well, as well a little bit gummy, some pockets, but not too many. And then here by Pastamon, also a crumb like that, very, very, very big holes. You can see here it looks gummy. Uh, it doesn't have to be, it seems like it didn't ferment at all. And another by one by Ophelia, I think this one is already a little bit better, but still two big holes. This is a sign that something is wrong with your bread. Dan Levitt, sorry for my pronunciation, another one. Very, very big holes. The crumb is a little bit more open, but still I would say this is a defect. This is something that we can fix with the three tips that I'm about to show you. And here, me, another bread that I made. The crumb, if you look here in the center, oops, <laughs> the crumb here, if you look in the center, it looks a little bit more um, nicely fermented, fluffy, but then you have this big, 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 big center piece here. That's not nice at all. Let's talk about a couple of successes. So this is a bread made by Carmen. And if you look at the crumb structure here, you can see that it's nice and puffy, nice and airy, nice jalapeno cheddar bread. So this to me is an epic success in terms of crumb structure. Then we get this bread here by Sensil, which I think is also great. You don't need to have necessarily a crumb structure like this on the previous bread, but this is nice. It's somewhat airy. Uh, it's also not too open. The only thing I would probably improve here is probably the baking time because it doesn't look so nicely baked, but that's something that Sensel has uh, previously written anyways. This is a bread that I made. I think it's really nice. Um, it has this typical ear structure here, the bunny shape from the sourdough bread. So you have all this crisp flavor coming in your mouth the moment you take a bite. The crumb is very fluffy. It looks a little bit open, not too open as well, except maybe here in the center there, it might be even a little bit too open. So I think this is a great looking bread. This is a ciabatta that I made some time ago. It's also not too open, but you can see that there are some nice pockets of fermentation. So it's very fluffy. Openness of the crumb is mostly about fluffiness. And this is the lesson that I want to teach you. Some people are baking rye bread, but if you're baking a rye bread, then you cannot have an open crumb. Rye prevents you from building a gluten network. It can't be inflated. So, I mean, I cut this one way too fast because me being me, I'm always so hungry. So I slice my bread when it's still hot. But this is something that you always get when making rye bread. So yeah, there's not really that much that you can achieve here for rye. One more time, all the different breads next to each other. And I think all of those three are actually successes in terms of crumb structure. We don't have those gummy areas that we had before on the others. So if I go here one more time, you can see here, uh, here you have those large gummy areas where there's no fermentation at all. 
or here for instance no fermentation at all so this dough has not been inflated whereas here um, you can see that all those breads are somewhat fluffy so those are successes to me the main reason why this is happening is that you're not fermenting your dough well enough and this is especially a problem for new sourdough bakers you have a sourdough starter and that sourdough starter might not be in a good enough shape but we'll talk about that in a second what you actually made is you made a gigantic naan bread traditionally naans are not made with any leavening agents or not made with any yeast or so yeast has only been discovery a discovery recently made uh, you have the hot tandoor oven and that helps to make it a little bit fluffy those are some naans that are made in my pizza oven for instance and so yeah this is exactly what happened <clears throat> the water inside of your dough <clears throat> starts to evaporate and what happens then is your bread lifts upwards creating those gigantic pockets so you made a gigantic naan bread pretty much but please eat it because it's still very very delicious no need to throw anything away what you could also do what we germans like to do for instance is to make knudel out of this they are made out of leftover bread so just a day later put that together and make some delicious knudel out of it so i said failed at the start but this is actually not correct every homemade bread is a win it's just not as fluffy so please don't see it as a fail it's something that you can improve upon okay let's now talk about the three fixes that i wanted to show you and then the bonus picture afterwards sample jar the main problem that bakers always have is that the fermentation for a new sourdough bread isn't in a place where it should be and what I like to do is I like to extract a small sample jar. So I take a bit of my main dough after I mix everything together and then I mark this jar. Look out for a size increase. If you see a size increase at some point, that's a good sign. It could take 6 hours, 12 hours. Now don't go for a doubling in size like I did, maybe only for a 50% size increase. Then at least you can be sure that you no longer have those gigantic pockets inside. The gigantic pockets are always a sign of complete under-fermentation. Boost your wild yeast. Oh, sorry, that's cut off here. So boost your wild yeast. When you just set up a sourdough starter, what happens is you don't have a good ratio between yeast organisms and bacteria. You might have too much bacteria to begin with. So you want to be boosting your wild yeast. The yeast is creating its CO2, the yeast is leavening your dough. That's exactly what you want. So how can you boost that? Daily feedings of a 1 to 5 to 5 ratio. So don't give up on your stutter yet. Keep feeding it every day. Do this for another week or another two weeks. This is going to help you to get a healthy balance of yeast and bacteria. And this way your stutter is able to inflate the dough much, 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 much better. Point number three, and there's actually gonna be a video on this topic coming up soon, is a stiff stutter. A normal stutter always has a hydration of 100%, one part flour, one part water. But based on my recent research, new video coming up soon, I can recommend you to also make a stiff stutter. A stiff stutter has half the amount of water compared to the flour, so it's much, much stiffer. You actually have to knead it together pretty much. But this seems to be a super good way to boost the yeast activity. So if nothing works, try the stiff stutter. This could be a viable solution for you to get more yeast activity. And yes, this is actually the crazy experiment that I have conducted, including a couple of adult balloons. And it's going to be live very soon. And there are so many cool learnings from this experiment. And I can't wait to finally edit the video. I'm too lazy. And then show you my findings. Because to me, this experiment has been really, really eye-opening in terms of Sardo and hopefully for you as well. The bonus picture. <laughs> So whenever traveling, I'd like to take my sourdough with me. That's my sourdough bread pit, uh, enjoying the views on the Madeiran mountains. I like to collect wild yeast from all around the world. Yep, gluten out. Let me know which tip works the best for you. If you have additional pictures, please share them on our Discord server and hope you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, may the gluten be with you.